Welcome to Daily Office Devotions. I'm Reggie Kidd. I'm glad to be with you this Thursday in the season after Pentecost. We're taking a detour from the daily office readings for a few days. Instead, we're thinking through various facets of worship and how our Lord provides meaningful communion with Him through our formal corporate worship as well as in individual worship in our daily devotions. The thoughts offered here are excerpts from articles I wrote for Worship Leader magazine a few years ago. Be still. Mr. Kid, your mom's heart is pumping blood as if she was 20 years old, not 91, explains the ER doctor. Flabbergasted, I reply, okay, so why is she in the ER? She has congestive heart failure. Pause, apparently taking in the blank look on my face. Your heart has to have a constricting strength to pump blood out. She's got plenty of that but your heart also has to have an expanding strength to receive blood. Your mom's heart is losing that ability. If the heart can't relax and expand, blood can't enter and fluid gets backed up in the body. Eventually the congestion will take her out and cause her death. All we can do is manage things until that happens. I'm sorry. Several months later, my mom's congestive heart failure was indeed being managed for the time being. She was doing well, even if, as she said, getting old will either make you tough or kill you. Heart health. My mom's particular heart ailment, power to pump out but not to take in, had given me pause, though. I think of my laundry list prayer life and of my affection for nonstop, high octane, uber decibel worship. Of all the pressures I feel to be producing, conducting, crafting, designing, tweaking, critiquing, supervising, and leading worship, I wonder about my spiritual heart health and that of those I'm leading. Shortly after my mom's hospital stay, The Robert E. Weber Institute for Worship Studies, where I teach, was in session. I was accustomed to then-chaplain Daryl Harris leading our morning devotions with unusual spiritual perceptivity. But one morning I was caught unawares. I can't go into detail, but let's just say I was mired in some inner conflict So I'm pouring myself into the praise and prayer, looking to worship my way out of the funk. After his message, Daryl says, we go now to a period of silence. By silence, I mean silence. I don't mean silent prayer. I don't mean silent meditation on scripture. I don't mean rehearse your day's schedule. I mean, be still, be quiet. And just listen. We knelt and sang a lovely setting of Be Still from Psalm 46, 10a that Daryl and Eric Wise had written. Take in. Then the silence set in. Glorious quiet, healing peace, grace-filled silence. I felt my heart relax and expand. I felt spirit entering. I felt conflict flee when... After a few minutes passed, we rose to sing the Lord's Prayer, Eric Wise's version is something of an IWS anthem. I rose a different person. In that moment, I realized why the ancients revered silence, why many sought the desert, wanting to hear a voice the city drowned out. They knew the vision of God was a, well, shut my mouth sort of affair. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 20. They noticed that in scripture some visions demand modesty of expression. Do not write this down. Revelation chapter 10 verse 4. They observed that even in heaven itself when something big is about to happen silence may be what the moment requires. When the lamb opened the seventh seal there was silence in heaven for about a half an hour. Revelation chapter 8, verse 1. They perceived that, like Job, 
if you get the audience you wish for with God, you just may have to say, I lay my hand on my mouth. Job chapter 40, verses 4 through 5. Worship needs the same sort of rhythm that our hearts require. Pump out. I lift my hands in praise for you are majestic and mighty and worthy of honor. Take in. You are merciful and tender of heart and yet unsearchable in your judgments and inscrutable in your ways. And so I bow and wait and listen in silence. Be blessed this day.